Hello, friends. This is Dave Hurwitz, executive editor at ClassicsToday.com, and I'm having a, a visitation. Come here, honey. Come here. It's all right. Okay. Here we got Finster. Some of you asked, how's Finster doing? She likes to climb around. Say hello. Say hi. That's a good girl. Um, and she climbs around. She climbs around everywhere. And when I'm doing these, sometimes she jumps on the computer and whatnot. So I'm going to put you down. Thank you. Thank you, Finster. Okay, where were we? Yeah, reference recordings. And today we're talking about Mozart, but it's an entire box of Mozart recordings. This is totally different from the way we usually do it because, well, when I explain to you what it is, you'll know. We're talking about Arthur Grumio's Mozart. Because of all the great violinists of the 20th century, no one was more associated with Mozart's name than Arthur Grumio. And Decca, I believe it was Decca Italy, issued this box of all of Grumio's Mozart recordings. And there's an astonishing amount of stuff in here, and an amazing amount of it consists of reference recordings. So we're gonna we're gonna talk about it and go through the box and see what things are references and what things aren't. Um, 19 CDs worth of stuff. You know, it really is it really is amazing that Grumio devoted so much time to Mozart. I mean, it's not so amazing because Mozart, of course, was a genius and the music's fabulous. But he was a, a dyed-in-the-wool violin virtuoso, but a guy of truly elevated taste and culture and musicianship. And he just adored Mozart and he, he made recordings of Mozart that became references, both at chamber ensembles, his own group, and as a solo violinist. So let's see what's inside the magic box, shall we? Um, it's really, really cool. I wonder if this even still exists. Of course, it was in the big Grumio box, you know, but uh, it begins with, okay, so here we go. He did all the violin concertos a couple of times um, in mono and in stereo. His, he is absolutely, you cannot do the Mozart violin concertos without Grumio. Grumio is the reference for the Mozart violin concertos, but the reference became, let me close that, it's sticking up there, became his stereo series with Colin Davis. The stereo violin concertos are the references, and I don't think anybody would argue with that. I can't imagine how anybody would argue with that. It's been it's been one of those axiomatic things for decades, generations almost, that the Mozart violin concertos begin with Grumio. And one of the things that made them so wonderful is the fact that, you know, Mozart's violin concertos are Midland Mozart. You know, he was like 15 when he wrote them, and he wasn't like all that thrilled, <laughs> it seems, with the project. And they're not terribly virtuosic, and, you know, the ends, are they're not flashy in any particular way. And and so, you know, the, the major violinists tended to avoid avoid them, except for numbers three and five. Five, particularly the Turkish, you know, got an outing once in a while. But most violinists kind of stayed away from doing extensive series of Mozart violin concertos, and they certainly weren't going to hang their hats on their performances of Mozart violin concertos. Grumio was the exception, and deservedly so. So here we have um, his first batch of Mozart violin concertos uh, with the uh, Vienna Symphony under Bernard Palmgartner. And let's see who else is doing some of these. And Rudolf Moralt is doing some of them. Um, so there you've got like a bunch of them. Then you've got Mozart violin sonatas with Grumio and Clara Haskell. Now, I ask you a couple of them. The sonata in B flat, Kershaw 454, that's it, 454, and Kershaw 526. Late violin sonatas, the ones where Mozart was really writing it like full steam, and they're glorious. And then those are in mono as well. And then we've got the Stereo London Symphony Orchestra Colin Davis Violin Concertos, which are the reference recordings for the Mozart Violin Concertos. Um, now, since then, of course, Mozart has become so much more respectable for virtuosi to try their hand at, and there have been many glorious recordings of Mozart's Violin Concertos. That is true. But Grumio still stands with the best and still serves as the reference against which all others must be compared and measured. And then we've got this Symphonia Concertante, oh, the fabulous one for violin and viola, with Arrigo Pelliccia Viola uh, and the London Symphony and Colin Davis and the Rondo and the Adagio, you know, all the other little violin things. That's with the new Philharmonia and Raymond Leopard. Um, then we've got some more violin sonatas with Clara Haskell, the uh, stereo ones which are just totally fabulous. And the fabulous one where he plays with himself, the Sonata for Piano and Violin in E-flat, 
Kershaw 481 with Grumio playing the piano and the violin <laughs> with himself dubbing himself, um, which is kind of amazing. It just goes to show what a, a, a died in the wool Mozartian he really was. I mean, it was it was extraordinary. So then we've got like a bunch of little things arranged by Chrysler and whatnot that that matter not not too much. And then a wonderful series of violin and piano works with Walter Klein, which is just wonderful. Absolutely wonderful, because Walter Klein, you know, was made all those Vox recordings of all that Viennese stuff. He was a wonderful pianist who, for some reason, never had that major label career the way he probably should have. But you've got the Sonata for Piano and Violin, Kerschel 454, again, and the six variations on Au Bord d'une Fontaine for violin and piano, and then a bunch of other violin sonatas. So that's delicious. And you've got, like, even more of them on CD 10, more violin sonatas with Walter Klein. Uh, wonderful musicianship all the way through, all the way through. I can't think of anything here, frankly. It's another disc of violin sonatas, another four discs. Four, yeah, he did a lot of this stuff, indeed. So you've got four discs of violin sonatas or, or music for piano and violin, including variations and things, with Walter Klein, which are just reference recordings. Might as well be, right? They're beautiful. And then we have major stuff. I mean, the violin sonatas are also Mozart that people tend to pay less attention to. Some of the mature ones are amazing, but Mozart wrote like dozens of them, and, and some of them are rather ephemeral, but these are the, the big ones. Then we have the Mozart quintets, and this is the reference set of Mozart quintets. Not Again, there have been many, many other Mozart string quintet cycles since this one, but it more than holds its own, and it is glorious. Grumio with his own ensemble consisting of of Arpad, oh, I, I pronounce these people, kill me now. I'm going to try it. All right. Um, Arpad, Arpad uh, Gerentz, violin, Georges Janser, viola, Max Lesseur, other viola, and Eva Chaco, cello. And this is the Grumio Quintet doing all the Mozart string quintets. And they're totally, utterly fabulous, wonderful, amazing, glorious things. And of course, we have the Clarinet Quintet with George Peterson clarinet, just wonderful, absolutely glorious. And the uh, oboe quartet, wow, with Pierre Pierlo, oboe, and various other people. I mean, just think of what he did, the flute quartets, um, two of them in D major and A major, and in C major and G major, four of them, oh my God, with William Bennett flute and the Grumio trio. And then the amazing divertimento and E flat for string trio, the greatest string trio ever written by anybody. And when Grumio, the Grumio trio did this, I mean, it was not well known at all. Really wasn't. I mean, you could say that they put it on the map with this gorgeous performance. Then the duos for violin and viola, which are amazing works. I mean, Mozart was always at his best when he had a challenge writing a, the world's largest string trio for just three instruments. I mean, the divertimento, it's like almost an hour long. Yeah, that's a challenge. And Mozart just blew it out of the water. So he also does with these charming duets for violin and viola, Kerschel's 423 and 424 with Arrigo Pelliccia, viola. And then CD 19, the last disc, which is the six preludes and fugues, Kerschel 404A, which are arranged for the, the Grumio trio. Now, really, when you think about it, the, the, the essence of this is the string quintets and the, uh, the, the string quintets, the violin concertos in stereo with Colin Davis, and also I would argue the violin sonatas with Walter Klein, I mean, and Clara Haskell, of course, and that divertimento. I mean, think about it, though. 19 discs devoted to Mozart by one of the great violinists um, a, a guy who who poured his soul into playing this music with consummate elegance and and musicianship and style and beauty of tone and really it's it's an astonishing legacy and to be honest with you I can't think of another major violinist of the 20th century who who gave themselves to quite the same degree to a single composer with such complete and total success. It's a remarkable legacy. It truly is a remarkable legacy. And that's why, for this reference recording, it's simply Grumio's Mozart. 
whatever it happens to be, it's Grumio's Mozart. That is the reference. And uh, yeah, definitely. So keep on listening, friends. Thanks so much for joining me. Take care.